It's not in our mindset, in this natural universe, that we get something for nothing. It's impossible. Is it? The one basic cornerstone concept of it all is that the universe, this three-dimensional universe that we see, and the other dimensions of time, are dependent upon wave theory, i.e. the laws of fluid mechanics. We're dealing with a scale of eight, harmonics. We're dealing with empathy. We're dealing with resonance. We're dealing with telepathy. We're dealing with empathic resonance. For instance, if you put two guitars together and you strum one guitar, the other one starts vibrating. Empathic resonance, it's called. Minds do that with each other. Bodies do that. Physics does that. In more complicated jargon, there's a whole series of mathematics built up to interpret wave theory and transformations. It's called Fourier transformations. We want to get down to just understanding free energy. Basically, the universe is a fluid. It's an ocean of energy, but it's not an ocean of homogeneous energy. There's finely grainy bits, there's bigger bits, there are packets of energy. It's just all moving about in this kind of soup. Now, the stuff we can see is more concrete to us. Our eyes take in the visual spectra of what we can see, but there's stuff that we can't see. And this stuff's swirling about, it's moving about. There's actually a law which describes the law is called emergence, that structure emerges out of chaos. Best example we can think of in the night sky is the red spot on Jupiter. A massive storm, and in the eye of the storm is this strange attractor, this structure. Now, another way to look at this is that we've got chaos, and that the simple law of emergence, that out of this swirling soup comes structures, and that that both the swirling soup and the structures can all be explained using the mathematics of music, basically. That's it, the harmony of the spheres. If you could imagine that ether, all the stuff we can't see, was a hidden orchestra. Violins and cellos, violas, double basses, boing away, boing away. We can't see the orchestra, but we are the notes we recognise. But this orchestra is continually playing in the background. That's the moving ocean of God, the Logos, if you want to get very poetic there. The Word. In the beginning, life was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And then, let there be light. And that things started moving about. That the orchestra started playing. And from the orchestra, came forth matter, that's us, symphony of matter or fabric or concrete, whatever we are, we emerged, we are the notes, the mathematical notes, the background orchestra of the subatomic and chaos is playing. So that's who we are, we are that. Now when Albert Einstein says that um, he was never sure whether a particle in fact, all of 20th century physics cannot explain why a particle is not a wave or a wave is not a particle. Well, the answer is that a particle is a wave and a particle. Because a particle is a continuous wave, as well as being a physical object, it is also a continuous wave. It's the most incredible paradox of the 20th and 21st century. Is a particle a particle or a wave? I have just rediscovered Nikola Tesla's theory of environmental energy. A particle is both a particle and a wave at the same time. And I also now understand what all the funny drawings of particles in the ancient alchemy books are all about as well. This is how free energy works. If you can imagine a hydroelectric dam, you know, like you've got a reservoir and you've got a concrete dam. And you know the principle of hydroelectric power. You open up a sluice and the water comes running down the sluice and powers the turbine. The weight and pressure of the water. Now, it's this pressure of the water that we're actually talking about. The chaotic subatomic ocean of the reservoir is the orchestra. We're the concrete of the dam. Now, if you want to tap in to the power of the orchestra, 
All you have to do is open up a sluice in the concrete of the dam and the power of music will come rushing through and drive our turbines. How you open up a sluice in the dam or have a flat plate that's highly magnetised and you simply spin it. You spin a flat plate-like magnet. Spin a magnet and change the world. <laughs>